get rid of this. I would tell you, because I see too, too much, too, too many young people here, about one experiment I did with hashish. <laughs> there is a habit of mice. I did experiments with mice. There is a habit of, of mice after you inject tetrahydrocannabinol, the, the active ingredient of hashish to them, or hashish even. They go like this to leak their to leak their to, to leak their to leak their tail. Do like this all the time. And once with American colleague, we put 12 mice in a clave and inject them with hashish with THC. Out of 12, 11 mice run clockwise. Like this. One mouse ran counterclockwise. The American colleague, not me, was surprised of the phenomenon and ran to the professor, supervisor, and tell him there is something very interesting, a mouse running counterclockwise while the others are running counterclockwise. So the professor came and he was very angry. He looked at the cave <laughs> and the cave and said, kill this animal. It will destroy our experiment. <laughs> the American guy took the mouse and killed the mouse the way we killed m mice in, uh, 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 in the laboratory and went to the notebook and wrote 11 mice were injected with hashish. All of them run clockwise. <laughs> and that's what happened in Palestine. After expelling the Palestinians, there was elections. Democratic elections. You can see a few things about the procedure. With free speech, free elections, with debates, with everything. And there was the results of the elections. The Labour Party get like this, the right wing like this, the uh, communists like this, and everything. And then start speaking about the only democracy in the Middle East. So we, I think, We should not, even after 62 years, we should not be silent about this issue. We should explore the dirty secret of Israeli democracy. And the tragedy does not end there. Because Israeli democracy come back to the place of the crime again and again. Go back to the first fault. And now we are hearing that Palestinian citizens of the state of Israel, their numbers is getting higher and higher. And we should look away for at least political transfer. The Minister of Transportation said that we should propose to the Palestinians, the Arab citizens of Israel, they don't call Palestinians Arab citizens of Israel, to vote to the Palestinian Council, not to the Israeli Knesset. Other propose to change the borders of Israel that some of the Arab citizens go away. How to minimize the number of Palestinian citizens? That's to keep that the Jewish state would be based on democratic process. To keep the majority. That's what happened in 48. And that's what's coming now again and again. It's very dangerous. 
The Israeli democracy is very dangerous creature. It could lead to another transfer of Palestinian citizens of Israel. Logically, you can make the logical analysis again. Learn from Hannah Arendt then. She did it before anything happened. She just analyzed. If you say Israel should be a Jewish state in any case, nevertheless, what's the demographic balance, what's the, every, in, in any case, then, and you want it also to be democratic, so you would work to change the demographic balance if it's come to a dangerous point. And you can do it before. By revoking citizenship of Palestinians or revo revoking the right to, there are many proposals like this. There is no, till now there is no laws I want to be, to emphasize, but I'm just predicting to where this idea of Jewish and democratic state could lead in uh, the future. By the way, you know, Palestinian citizens of Israel are 1.3 million people. which are exactly 17% of the population. Israel annexated East Jerusalem. There are about 300,000 Palestinians in East Jerusalem, but Israel didn't give citizenship to the people in East Jerusalem. They gave them only residency. Why not to change, to influence the balance between uh, uh, Arabs and Jews in Palestine. Many people were surprised that Yitzhak Rabin, after the Oslo Accord, agree, agreed then that Palestinian, Palestinians of East Jerusalem can vote to the uh, Palestinian Legislative Council, to the Palestinian Parliament. I think this was also a model for the Palestinian citizens of Israel. Go, we will govern you, but your political influence will not be in the state. It will be outside the state. That's what's going on in East Jerusalem. That's exactly. So they wanted to, there are now voices in Israel, till now, not in the mainstream, but it's within a few years it will become mainstream demand to revoke the right of voting from Palestinian citizens of Israel. <coughs> now, after the establishment of the State of Israel, Israel took all the lands and property of Palestinian refugees. Before 48, in the eve of Palestinian Nakba, before the war of 48, the Jewish community, the agency, the privacy, the national uh, fund, all of them had 6% of the land of Palestine. After a few years, of the establishment of the State of Israel, the State of Israel had control over 93% of the land, which was owned by the state. Israel took against the international law, by the way, by law of obscenities and uh, they have special laws for how to take the land and the property of uh, the refugees, but they took all of it. Then they started, the war is finished. They took the land by war. But now there was a small Palestinian minority inside Israel, which I represent this community directly. I came from there. The Israeli authorities want to take the land of this 
not only to take the land of the refugees of all the of, of all Palestine, but to take the private land of Palestinian citizens of the state. So they started making laws, very democratic laws. By the way, you cannot claim if you come as a journalist to the Knesset, you see the law. The law is neutral, no word about Arabs and Jews. The procedure is okay. First reading, second reading, debate, even public debate. And after that, you have a new law. You can't say nothing about the law. You would say it's democratic law. <laughs> but when it comes to implementation, all the laws of confiscation of land and property in Israel, which are about 25 laws, Israel is a school of confiscation of land and properties. They have all kinds, but all of them, I would say, I had to emphasize, are neutral. The Minister of Finance can confiscate land for the public interests. The Minister of Defense can confiscate land for military purposes. The Ministry of Transportation for every, you can't say nothing, it's okay. But when it's come to implementation, all these laws were implemented in one way direction. Taking the land from Palestinian Arab citizens of the state of Israel and giving it to the Jewish community for the interest of Jewish community. <coughs> Not any time in the opposite direction. All the time in one direction. This way, Israel confiscated more than 75% of our land, the land of its citizens. And this is the open injury in our consciousness and in our hearts and in our political activity.